Hey everyone, welcome back to Everyday EV. It's Brandon. And Tyler. And for today's video, we're gonna do a little bit of a laid back style. For my 30th birthday, we are doing a Q&A style video. So I asked on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and a lot of you guys asked us questions. So for today's video, we are just going to dive into those answers and just kind of answer the questions that you guys had for us. So we ready to get started? Let's get started. So now these questions range anywhere from what recording equipment we are using to uh, electric vehicle questions specifically about tax credits, OEMs, and more in-depth questions as well. So we're gonna get a good range of answers here. So what's the first question? All right, so the first question is from Liv, who says, what EV would you like to see in your driveway with a bow on it for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> so before we before I answer a question, I want to give a, a quick shout out to Liv and Patrick of the Mock E vlog. Uh, we met Liv and Patrick in uh, Pasadena, California back in December. Yeah. So became good friends pretty quickly when we met them. Um, so Liv, to answer your questions, there there's three cars that I would want a bow on. Um, and it is the Hyundai Ioniq 5 the Kia EV6, and to kind of top out the price range, a Rivian R1T. Well, specifically the R1S, I like a boxy SUV. So, <laughs> is it coming? One of those is. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> next question. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. Um, <clears throat> All right, so this comes from Alex. Uh, they say, what's been your favorite driving experience in an EV? Oh man, so, <laughs> Driving an electric vehicle is always memorable to me, but there's one specific memory I have, um, which was back in February of 2016, when I was taking a 2016 Tesla Model S P90D up to um, it, up Michigan. And at the time, the supercharger network isn't what it is today. Um, so I had to travel about 50 miles up north um, above Ann Arbor in the winter time. And the range was definitely impact, or the winter uh, weather was impacting my range. And um, I had to go up to uh, Saginaw, Michigan, conduct a test drive with a potential customer, and then drive back to Ann Arbor to make sure uh, I could charge to get home. Well, uh, along the way, temperatures dropped below zero and the range was plummeting on my way back, but I made it to Ann Arbor. But what was more fun is that coming from Ann Arbor to Cleveland, I hit a winter storm and there was probably about 10 inches of snow on the turnpike. It was a whiteout and I could barely see where I was going. All the safety assist features were turned off because every sensor was blocked by ice and snow. And at one point I'm positive I was actually not on the road. I was driving in grass. Um, so fortunately Tyler met me at the Tesla showroom in Cleveland with a uh, special Starbucks hot chocolate drink, I believe it was. It was. And we <laughs> made it home and we're here to tell the tale. Um, but what made that so memorable is that the customer actually ended up buying the car from us and requested me to do a hand delivery uh, because of how impressed he was with, um, with the entire experience. So overall, I would say that's probably the most memorable EV experience at the moment. It was worth it. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And another person's driving a Tesla. Well, at least they were five years ago. <laughs> so. All right, so next question is from Steven. Uh, he asked, with the new rules... Uh, Biden's administration is putting in place that seem to favor the unionizing of the big three. Is there still a way to get a tax credit on an import EV or even a domestic Tesla? So that's a really good question, Stephen. Um, so at the moment, that was actually struck down. And not to get too much into politics, because politics are always a joy to talk about. <laughs> That's sarcasm. Uh, we're gonna move forward. Um, there, so Tesla and General Motors at the moment do not qualify for the $7,500 federal tax credit. They may qualify for state incentives depending on where you live. Um, but at the moment, Tesla and GM does not qualify. Um, but however, there are a handful of other manufacturers that have not hit the 200,000 um, sold limit in terms of electric vehicles sold. So other manufacturers do qualify for that $7,500 tax credit. Um, one thing I do wanna clarify when it comes to the federal tax credit is that, that it's not a guarantee that you will actually get essentially $7,500 back or towards your income tax. It all depends on how much you owe in income tax. So for example, if you owe $3,000, you will get that uh, $3,000 pretty much essentially credited and then the rest of that $7,500 disappears. You don't get that as a refund, it's just essentially meant for your income tax. 
Now, if you owe more than $7,500, say for example, $10,000, you still owe that $2,500. So that's pretty much how that uh, income tax works or that federal tax credit. So just keep that in mind when you are looking for an electric vehicle. So let's see what the next one is. Um, so we'll ask, uh, with Hyundai closing their ICE design facility, who is the next legacy auto to follow suit? So that's a good question. And also <laughs> shout out to Will from F the Pump. Uh, if you don't know F the Pump, check out his merchandise. Fantastic stuff, really cool stuff. Awesome guy too. Yeah, Will so is cool. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, I do want to clarify, uh, Hyundai is actually not stopping their ICE research. It was actually, or their internal combustion, sorry. Uh, ICE, ICE stands for internal combustion engine. Uh, it's kind of almost like an abbreviation EV enthusiasts use to describe combustion vehicles. Um, but Hyundai actually confirmed that they are not stopping research um, a few weeks after an article coming, that came out said that they were. Um, so sadly, they are still producing their combustion vehicles, but I'm assuming we're just going to see a handful of EVs come out in the time being. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll stop. Um, eventually. <laughs> eventually. <laughs> um, however, I definitely think that over the next few years, we are going to see OEMs introducing a lot more electric vehicles. Um, especially as they've determined that a lot of the future platforms are meant to be adaptable for different powertrains. Uh, so I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot more electric vehicles, but I think it's going to be some time before uh, the combustion engine goes away forever. I think so. It's going to be a bit. <laughs> it's going to be a bit. <laughs> okay, so next one comes from Candy. Uh, she asks, are there any Toyota cars you recommend I went to stick to Toyota on my next car because they're low on maintenance and affordable? So yes, that's a very good question. Um, a lot of people look at Toyota for the reliability, which is you know something I think is, is a good thing. Toyota is really known for the reliability. However, they've kind of been sticking in terms of uh, innovation when it comes to EVs. Mm -hmm. um, but fortunately, they did just announce one of their first electric vehicles called the BZ4X. It's an SUV. Um, it should get upwards of 250 miles of full electric range, which is really cool. And that should be out sometime in the middle of 2022. Um, Toyota also confirmed that they are working on six other uh, vehicles or electric vehicles under the BZ name. So they're definitely coming, but at the moment, I would really recommend if you are looking to stay with Toyota, either the RAV4 Prime, which is a plug-in hybrid vehicle, or the Prius Prime, which is also another uh, plug-in electric vehicle. Um, especially if you look at how, how you're living your day to day, uh, both of those vehicles will actually get over 30 miles on a full charge before the gas engine kicks in. Um, but at the moment, we kind of have to wait for Toyota to innovate a little bit. I still want the mini FJ Cruiser. Yeah, that like, would be pretty cool. I want that. <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> so we'll see. That's a good question, Candy. <laughs> okay. Um, so Trevor asked, uh, what is the power output of the USB-C ports in the ID4? So, it's going to be short and swim, uh, simple for you. Pretty much what I found is that the USB-C has a power output of 5 volts. Um, if you're looking at it in terms of watts, I don't know how to convert that, and yes, pretty much 5 volts. <laughs> <laughs> but I did find out that that's actually less power output compared to something like a Tesla Model Y offers. So I'm not exactly sure why uh, Volkswagen did that with their USB-Cs, but they seem to charge our phones pretty fast. I just leave it on the wireless charging pad Yeah. until yeah. it gets too hot, yeah. and then I take it off. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something to keep in your mind. Keep in my mind. See, I don't know everything about my car. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're still learning. So Darian asks, do you all like hawking... Logies, I think that's what that is. I think it's Lugies. Lugies? Yeah. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> uh, I do. He said, I have cerebral palsy, so I use a walker and wheelchair. I love electric cars. I'm excited about the all electric Silverado. I am too. Yeah. Uh, really excited. Um, then he says, Happy birthday. Then he says, Will the all electric Silverado have automatic doors? This would be awesome for someone with cerebral palsy, which I definitely agree with. Yeah, I agree yeah. with too. So the first part of your question, and thank you, Darian, for leaving a comment and asking these questions. I personally do not like hacking loogies. Uh, I don't know if you do. No. <laughs> but but <laughs> if that's something you enjoy, more power to you. Um, <laughs> 
But for for us personally, we do not. Um, but to answer your second question, um, at the moment, there's not a lot of information known about the Silverado EV in terms of some of the options that it does offer. Um, from some of the prototypes that we've seen with the unveilings, it doesn't look like it has power automatic doors. Um, I really wish it did because I think that that would offer some usability for people who would, you know, utilize that daily. Mm -hmm. um, one, one vehicle that does come to mind that does have a feature like that is the Tesla Model X. The front doors are automatic open and close. Um, one thing I, I do want to recommend, and this is actually something I looked into, um, if you are interested in that, there are there is a company out there, and I don't necessarily know if they are in production. Their website didn't really say too much, but it's called New Entry. I'll include it in the description. It's N U Entry, and um, they have like a third party mechanism that uses an electric motor to uh, open and close the doors automatically. Um, their website definitely made it look like more of a convenience feature, but I definitely think that that could be something that you could utilize to get into your vehicle more easily. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely check out New Entry. I'll include the um, link in the description for you, but uh, also thank you, Darian, for wishing me a happy birthday, and thank you for supporting us. <clears throat> okay, so Stephen asks, uh, what do you think the most important vehicle category is to drive EV adoption in the near term, so one to two years? Mm -hmm and which models look most promising in which category you choose. Okay, so one thing I do wanna say that I love about these Q&A videos is that we can give shout outs to our fellow content creators. Uh, Steven is from Plug and Play EV. Go subscribe to his channel. He produces some incredible electric vehicle content, very data driven, uh, which if you are a data nerd like I am, it's very interesting to watch. <laughs> so definitely go subscribe to his channel. Um, so Stephen, to answer your question, I would say the one category that is going to drive EV adoption is the electric truck category, Spe mm -hmm. specifically pickup trucks. Obviously the heavy duty trucks are going to come and I definitely think that's gonna leave an impact. But here in America, obviously a lot of people love pickup trucks and I think electrified trucks are going to push that first, uh, further. Um, you know, we have things like the uh, Silverado EV coming, we have the Ford F-150 Lightning, which should be delivered pretty much any day or any month soon. soon. Um, <laughs> and then um, and then you have the, uh, the long-awaited Cybertruck, which should hopefully be out sometime soon. I think they pushed it back to 2023. But I think here specifically in the United States, EV pickup trucks are what's really going to push it forward. Um, the one thing that I think, or the one vehicle that I think is gonna have the biggest impact is the F-150 Lightning. Um, I think the attention and the amount of um, excitement behind the F-150 Lightning um, product line is just, it's, it's electrifying. I mean, a lot of people who d haven't even considered going electric until that existed is just exciting. It is. So I think we'll see that. It looks great too. Yeah. Do you have a <laughs> specific car that you're excited for? <clears throat> I would say this is this is my category personally, which is probably gonna be, you know, honestly five plus years down the road, but the sports car category. Like I'm I'm not talking big sports car, I'm just talking like Miata S two thousand size. <laughs> That's what I want is a, a small sub fifty thousand dollar, like little two hundred mile sports car. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. And then we could have our pickup truck. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, you have your pickup trucks and you have your sports car. <laughs> so you have your pickup trucks to drive your sports car to the track. So yep, exactly. Yeah, it's a win-win. I mean, so they should pretty much do a buy one, get one at that point. Like, they should. Yeah. They should. Yeah. If you're listening, whatever OEM watches this video, make that happen. <laughs> Please do. Please yes. do. <laughs> so Ian asks, uh, for non-Tesla owners, what's the go-to apps to download or use or check out for um, the best experience possible? He says, like Electrify America, Better App Planner, etc. So, I already answered Ian uh, partly on Twitter with what my answer would be. Do you have a guess with what my answer will be? I do. <laughs> I, I think it's pretty <laughs> obvious. Uh, I would recommend 100% Chargeway. <laughs> And if you follow me on YouTube, social media, you know that I work for Chargeway as the data lead. It is a product that I thoroughly believe in and that I am extremely passionate about. And I believe that it is going to change the entire EV industry with the way that people look at electric fuel. Um, it's a product that has the potential and is already changing how people look at how they charge their vehicles. So the nice thing with Chargeway is that you have so many different features. You have a map to find chargers. 
in those chargers or in the, the different pins on the maps, you have information based on that specific network. We have timer features and we also have a fantastic trip planner. So that is pretty much the only app that I recommend for people who are looking to find stations as well as learn more about electric vehicles. So go download Chargeway. It's available for Apple and Android. <laughs> For both. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer, as I mentioned, I'm employed by Chargeway. <laughs> Chuck has a long question, so with multiple parts. And I think this is our last question. This is our last one, yeah. I think. Um, oh, wait, no, there's another question. Oh, no, there is yeah. one more. So Chuck asks, as a non-EV driver, the charging options are con in levels are confusing. So he says, I get that most charging is done at home, but most folks forget to charge and then went out in the wild. Can a Tesla charge at a non-Tesla charger? When I've looked up charger locations on an EV website or an app for charging locations, it says it's for a customer, what does that mean? For example, those are charger at a hotel. Does that mean a driver has to stay at the hotel to use the charger? Um, this is, might has been addressed by you already, but it's completely foreign to me. Yeah. So I think that's a really, really good question. And that's a common question for people who are looking to get in electric vehicles, that this is a new space for them. So thank you, Chuck, for asking that question. Um, so to answer your first part, Teslas can actually charge at different standards, but you have to have different adapters. So for example, a Tesla can charge at a green or a J1772 or a CCS uh, plug based on specific aftermarket adapters that you can purchase. Um, the green level twos or the J1772, Tesla does provide an adapter when you purchase your vehicle or you can purchase it from their website. Um, a green uh, fast charger or a CCS, you kind of have to um, look at aftermarkets. Tesla is bringing one to market, but it's not available right now, but it should be hopefully soon. Um, for Blue or Chatamo, Tesla does offer an adapter for Blue fast chargers, so you can purchase one of those off of Tesla's website. Um, so essentially, yes, Tesla, even though they do have their own proprietary standard, you can still use other uh, charging stations with adapters. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Um, and then to answer your other questions um, in terms of restricted or kind of... Um, uh, chargers that are at locations that you might have to be either a customer, an employee, a guest, or et cetera to utilize it, definitely plan. Um, you know, check out Chargeway. We have restricted chargers available. If you are questioning, say, for example, like a charger at a hotel, definitely give the front desk a call and just see. You know, it might be available to the public, but it never hurts to ask. Um, and that's definitely one thing to keep in mind when you are looking at charging stations because some of them are at businesses or might be an employee only parking or parking garages. So definitely keep that in mind. Um, but check out uh, Chargeway and definitely play around with it and just determine exactly which chargers will work for your situation. So there was actually a question that I forgot to take a screenshot of, but this is from our friends at ChargeGo. Uh, we actually missed meeting them in Pasadena, California. Um, they were there at the uh, Out of Spec EV Media Summit as well. Um, but definitely check out ChargeGo's um, YouTube channel, subscribe to their stuff. They have really, really interesting Tesla content. Um, but ChargeGo is a newer YouTube channel, and they asked us which recording equipment we use. Mm. So I think that this is a good question that you <laughs> and I can both answer because yep. it we've, we've collected. Now, just keep in mind, we've collected a lot of recording equipment over the past two years. It's not like something we've went out and just bought all at once. No, I would never do that. No. That was way too much for me all at once. <laughs> yes, way too much. <laughs> and and if now if you have the funding, feel free to go ahead and purchase everything you want at once. But like for us, it took us a good while to build up this equipment collection. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I wanted to break this in two, well, technically three categories, audio, recording, and then lighting. Um, so first one was audio. Um, the audio microphones that we're currently using, we have the Rode Wireless Go 2. Um, we also have the Wireless Go 1. Wanted to get the dual 2 so we both can have microphones on us at once. Yep. Um, and then we also have a Rode Video Micro, which is more of like a shotgun mic, um, which is actually something I haven't really used in a while because the wireless mics are just so useful. <laughs> They're more compact for like going on trips too. Yeah. <laughs> so it's easier to pack them. Yes. Yeah. And you can yeah. have them closer to your, to your mouth so your voice is picked up easier versus having to project more with the shotgun mic. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have a Rode lapel mic that works yep. with these. But sometimes I don't like to wire 
something up, you know, or yeah. shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing that we have is the Blue Yeti Caster Professional Mic Setup. This was a recommendation from Alex Sibla. Shout out to Alex. Um, he recommended this microphone. We use it for our podcasting as well as our voiceovers for videos. It's like crystal clear. Yes. It sounds so good. Yes. It sounds so good. And we'll we'll include some overlays of what these products look like and yeah. uh, links in the description so you guys can check those out. Um, and I would say that's pretty much it for audio. For audio. Yeah. Um, one thing to mention too with audio here in our office, which is essentially both my office and our recording studio, um, we do have a acoustic sound padding around the um, the room to prevent some echoing just because we do have hardwood floors. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that and then some like rugs and stuff like that. <laughs> Keep the noise down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now to recording. Uh, this is something that we've kind of been perfecting over the past two years. Yeah. Um, as of right now, we use our iPhone 13 Pros, um, the cinematic mode and like the cameras are just honestly fantastic they're not perfect but they're for a phone i think they're a fantastic mm -hmm. camera and then we also have my canon m50 that we use from time to time depending on if we want to have like more cinematic like actual like cinematic yeah. shots then we'll use my camera for that yeah we'll record with that one sometimes too yeah it's just when we go on trips it's a lot easier to take our phones and all of our equipment in one small bag instead of trying to put my camera and then all that gear into one yeah <laughs> which, which I mean, if you're a content creator, you know what it's like. Like, yeah. literally hauling equipment all around. It's, <laughs> it's a lot. It is. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, so mainly we use our iPhone 13 Pros. Prior, we used an iPhone uh, 10 or an XR, 10R, I think. I'm not sure exactly yeah, what XR. they are. Yeah. yeah, XR. <laughs> uh, we had an iPhone 11 Pro Max at one time that we <clears throat> utilized, but now we use our 13s. Um, and then the other thing that we utilize for stabilization, uh, we have a DJI um, Osmo 4 um, mm -hmm. that we utilize, and then we also have a Shift Cam Pro, Shift Cam Pro Grip. Uh, I was trying yes. to think of what that. <laughs> it's a long name. <laughs> yes, which is one of our newer <laughs> newer equipments, and it works just like you would hold like an old camcorder. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool for your phones. Yeah. yeah. Also has a wireless charging pad, so it charges your phone um, as well. Uh, That's pretty much how we shot the majority of our videos for our California trip actually was with the ship cam and then we used our tripod for everything else. Um, then we also have all of our GoPros. Yes. Forget about those. Yes. <laughs> we have our GoPros, uh, GoPro Hero Black, Seven Blacks. I think that's how you yep. say it. Yeah. Hero Seven Black. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Seven Black. We have two of those. And then we have a GoPro Session, session. Mm -hmm. that we have as well for in-car and exterior shots while we're driving. Um, and then for lighting, we have an 18 an 18 inch LED ring light that we purchased online. And then for interior shots, we also have a small LED uh, light box that works pretty well mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much all of our equipment. Um, obviously, you don't need to have that type of equipment to get a YouTube channel started. Um, as we mentioned, it took about two years to fund a lot of that investment. Mm -hmm. um, especially, you know, I do want to give a shout out. If you guys are interested in helping us, we do have a Patreon. I'll include a link below as well as a Buy Me a Coffee, which has helped us immensely when it comes to buying equipment. Yep. Um, so if you're looking forward, you know, if you want to support Everyday EV, please uh, check those out because that helps us create more content for you guys. Um, but yeah, I would say that would pretty much it in terms of uh, recording equipment. It's a lot. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> but I think that's all the questions. That was all the questions. So thank you guys for the birthday wishes. You know, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, I'm 30, which is kind of a milestone birthday. You know, it's exciting. Um, and one other thing that I actually we probably should mention in this is we are now officially business owners. We are. Everyday EV... L <laughs> I'm going to restart that. Everyday EV. Uh, uh, why is this so hard to say? <laughs> Everyday EV Productions LLC is now officially registered with the state of Ohio as a business. Super excited to be uh, business owners and to create more content for you guys through video as well as audio. Um, so, and honestly, we never would have got to this point if it wasn't for your support, you know, yeah. both through comments, subscribing, liking, sharing our videos. 
it just it means so much to us. So um, thank you guys. And all these questions has been great to answer. I'll have to do more of these. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And also one other thing too, if you guys want more like live streams or more videos where we get to interact with you guys more, please let us know because we could definitely set up more of those uh, style videos. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be fun to and they interact with you guys yeah. since you guys are pretty much why we're here. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, thank you guys. Um, if you like this video, make sure you like and share with your friends. And as always, please consider subscribing to Everyday EV. And do you remember? make every day electrifying. Yes. And take care <laughs> and stay safe. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one.